Hello everyone. Um, today I am upgrading the spindle on my CNC router and we'll turn it into a CNC spindle now. That doesn't make any sense. But um, I, as you see here, I kind of have, I'm doing some open heart surgery. Um, not brain surgery, that would be replacing the brain. I'm gonna do that eventually too. But I'm putting in the heart of this thing, which is the new spindle. Um, I have this, the Z axis torn apart. I've taken off the linear rails here. Um, the ball screw is still here. The uh, these little rails go on here and slide up and down. There's four of them. And uh, over here, I, you can see I have the fixture plate and this guy right here is what's gonna hold the spindle. And then check out, check out this bad boy, this thing, this thing. This is the new spindle. This is so beefy and badass. Um, I love that China can manufacture this kind of stuff for so cheap because it's really cool. Um, and probably the coolest thing about this is that I have a bunch of um, clamping options. In addition to this thing being water-cooled and more powerful and more efficient, um, it's, it's also going to allow me to plug in to, when I replace the brain, I'm going to be able to do speed control on this thing and do some cool stuff. But probably the coolest thing is uh, this. These are little um, these are little ER20 collets. And um, on my CNC, or on my router, I had three clamping options. I had half inch, quarter inch, and eighth inch. Now I have, this is all a series of metric that came with it. And then I also bought a series of standard. Um, and so I have something like 26 clamping options now, which is really cool because as you know, I'm trying to build a rocket at some point and um, I have, I'm gonna have to make some really small parts for the injectors. Um, at least with the design I have right now, this is, this is the plan. Um, and so, um, those parts, they need to be lathed, but uh, they're like almost, they're pretty much too small to make on my lathe. Um, so I really need like a CNC way to do it. So what I can do is I can clamp um, CNC, or I'm sorry, lathe bits to the bed of this thing. And then I can call it up into the, the um, router or the spindle, the new spindle, and I can spin it and I can use it as a lathe. Um, you have to do some tricks with the programming, but uh, I know it's definitely possible. So this is something that's going to allow me to do this. So that was a bit of a tangent, um, but that's part of the reason I, I just, part of the reason I'm happy to have this and be moving it up um, is I can do some really cool stuff like that with this machine. I can, I can increase the usefulness of this machine to me. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out a way to do this. And, and I flipped the camera around here. Um, initially, these bolts came through the back and mounted on these uh these guys right here um which was just an absolutely terrible design because you literally couldn't reach these bolts i don't even know how i got it on i almost had to like cut the bolts out to get this top bracket off it was sitting right here um which was really just terrible design so what i'm going to do now is uh this thing doesn't have any mounting holes so i'm going to drill a hole here 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 and here and i might put one in the middle i'm not sure i, I probably will it'll make it a little bit more stable and then i'm going to transfer that hole pattern to this I'm gonna put you know two, four to six holes in this area, and then thread tap them, and then this guy can be mounted on from the front and taken off from the front, which will make this so much better than uh, than it is right now. So I got to figure out what thread size I'm gonna use on this. I got to get some holes drilled in this. Uh, I got to see if I have a thread tap. I'll probably have to go to the hardware store to get uh, uh, bolts to put this on, but this is the plan right now, and I think it's gonna be a lot better than than it is right now. It'll allow me to take the uh, spindle on and off and adjust it and tram it in a lot more easily than I was able to before. I'm gonna get some layup fluid on this guy. Seven, two, one. Seven, three, one. Seven, two, one, seven, three, one. Point seven, two, one plus point seven, three, one divided by two, divided by two, three, six, three. So 
not the most precise way to do things. I don't love this way, but... It will do for now. Pretty close. Okay. And then let's see here. What do I want you here? Let's see. Is that, is that the right spot? Maybe. It looks about right. Okay. I'm gonna do 0.4 inches, I think. Point 0.42, that's what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna do 0 0.42 inches. And that'll put that right about where I want it. Okay. And should be a fine spot for that too. Should be, yeah, should be fine. Okay. okay. Do one in the middle. Three o oh, eight five three one. Three point one. Divided by two. One point five five. Oh, of course it is, yep. There we go, those are our marks. Okay, as you can see here, I have the holes, or the position of the where I'm gonna drill the holes uh, marked out here on the layup fluid. Now I'm gonna punch them and then we'll drill them out. Not perfect, but they'll do. All right, let me show you what I'm. This is this is this is how I'm setting this up to, to drill these holes, right? Um, I have it sitting on one, two, three blocks, and then I have also a piece of aluminum here. And if I accidentally drill and touch something, at least it'll be touching this aluminum. Now I'm gonna try to not have the bit fully supported, so because I don't really want to push through on these and mess them up. So I'm gonna try to drill off here where it's not supported and we'll see how it works. I'll put a lot of down pressure right here and I'll drill slowly and we'll see what happens.
Okay, what you just saw me doing is I realized that this was not actually flat on the bottom. And I think it was probably just a small burr because it really didn't take any time at all to clean up. Um, but I just put, I never do lapping directly on my fixture plate because this thing is super, super flat, but it does wear down. Um, even just using it makes it wear down, but putting a, a abrasive on it is not good. Um, so I never do lapping right on it. I always cover in a piece of aluminum foil. Aluminum is uh, actually very um, dimensionally tight, like it's the same thickness throughout. Um, but now you can see, I didn't show you the play before, but you can see here that this doesn't rock at all or anything. It's very solid. Um, so now I'm still figuring out the best way to transfer the holes from this to the plate, but uh, we're going to get it done here pretty soon. Uh, one thing I wanted to say, um, if you don't know much about lapping, I highly recommend you go through and look at Tom Lipton's. Um, he does like a three-part series on making laps and talking about laps and how to measure flatness and all these things. Highly recommend it. Um, but if you don't have a fixture plate, which they're not that much money, you can buy one uh, from China for, oh, apparently I really like Chinese tools. Um, you can buy one from China for not very much money. Um, but if you, if you can't afford that or you don't want to mess with it or whatever, you can go get a piece of glass from like a hardware store and uh, bring a straight edge and look at it. It depends on how, if it was like extruded or floated, but if you can find a piece of glass that's been floated, um, they like literally like float it on top of like, I think a molten pool of metal, but it makes it very, very flat, like actually like really flat. So you can actually use that to lap it. It's not gonna be quite as flat as a fixture plate or a, I'm sorry, a surface plate, but it'll be pretty flat and you can put your abrasive down on that. And that's, also, that's often used as a lap. Um, I'm gonna build some actual laps, like some metal laps at some point. Um, but I've, I've considered getting a piece of glass to do my lapping because uh, I don't like doing it on the fixture plate, but, um, there's some knowledge for you. Yeah. So what I got going over here is just me kind of being curious, but what I was curious is if I can use this flat part to line up with this flat part here and here um, to align this more or less in the, you know, this way, right? Get the angle perpendicular here, right? Or I guess parallel to the, the up and down of the machine. So assuming this is all square, which it probably isn't, um, <laughs> I have uh, this just on, sitting on a one, two, three, pushed up against this. I have this just kind of, I did it by feel. Um, lined up here um, and then I have my plunge indicator uh, just zeroed out right here roughly zeroed out and as you push it down we'll see that it is not entirely squared it's pretty close let's say that was three to so it was like eight thou over a few inches not that's pretty out but um, so yeah there's zero there I think we're gonna go up to about 11 towards the end here yep 11 so 11 thou you know, off over about four or five inches. Um, I'm gonna do the other side too. This isn't the end of the world because these holes are gonna be oversized, so I'll be able to adjust this. I was just kind of curious, so I put it on there to do it. So I got this thing aligned. My uh, camera died, so I'm really not sure how much you guys were able to see of it. But I just did the same method and I used my little tiny brass hammer here to uh, tap it until I was getting um, oh, come on. no, so I was getting, until I got this, until I got this parallel, um, this parallel to that. Um, and now what I'm doing is I'm just going through with the drill bit I used and I'm just uh, marking it into the layup fluid here, hopefully. We'll leave a mark here and we don't have to realign it. And then I'll put my center punches on there and we can drill out the base. 
And then after we do that, I'll widen these holes. And, uh, then I gotta drill, I gotta get another bit for this base plate for the tap size. But then we tap, drill out these holes, drill and tap the holes on the base plate and then we can put it together. Just making sure we have a mark on every single one. Looks like this one could use maybe a little bit more. And there we go, we've transferred the holes um, through and I can punch those. Oh, except that, that one's really faint, oh man. But uh, yeah, we should be able to get those through and uh, punched. Got those transferred. So now we can drill those out. Okay, so you just saw me widen the holes on this guy right here, so it's good to go. Um, I need to drill the holes in the, the plate and tap them, but I don't have the bit size for that. So I'm going to get that uh, tonight at work. I work at Home Depot, um, so I'm going to grab that. And uh, I'm also, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the shop and get it looking nice again. And then I'm going to pull out the old router cord and measure it, and I need a cord really about two or three feet longer than that. So I'll measure all that up and I'm gonna get that at Home Depot as well. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, I get the cord. I, I need two cords really, because I gotta run from the um, spindle speed controller, which is uh, this thing. This thing drives the spindle. So I gotta go from this to the power. So I need to get the cords to do both of those things. Um, 
and then yeah yeah that i'll pick that up and i'll pick up that bit and then tomorrow we should tomorrow i should get this done um yeah i i don't think it, i can't i can't imagine it taking more than one more day so hopefully we'll get this done tomorrow and be able to get it turned on and validate that it's working and and maybe even make some cuts and, and do some stuff get it trammed in all that jazz so yeah yeah i'll see you guys tomorrow I was so tempted to come out here and finish this last night, but I was just too tired. I couldn't do it, but I'm up this morning and I'm ready to do some of this. I gotta work again today, so I'm gonna work in the morning and I'm gonna work in the evening. But I got the bit. Um, we're gonna drill out these holes in this plate, uh, get it thread tapped, um, and hopefully get it mounted on there. We might not be, get fully trammed before I have to go to work, but we'll see, we'll see. Apologize for the way the light is coming through here and making these Im this image look kind of weird. It's morning, and why this light is very lovely for me. It's making the uh, the camera shot a little odd, but it is what it is. Now I want to talk about this wire really quick. I got the wire yesterday for the spindle um, and I just want to explain what's going on with this. So this is 14 gauge wire, which is actually really thin wire. It's actually like the thinnest wire they use in commercial stuff. And so you might be wondering why I went with 14 gauge when it seems like I should have a lot of power. You know, this is a, a powerful thing. It's a 2.2 it's a kilowatts. I think that's like, um, oh, it's a few horsepower, I think. Uh, it's like almost three horsepower, I think. Um, so why would I go with thinner wire? Well, if you take your kilowatts and you divide by your voltage, which is 240 in this case, um, this is my, my spindle is a, is a 240, 2.2 kilowatt um, spindle um, with an ER20 collet. So if you take your kilowatts, um, so two, two, uh, 2200 kilowatts or 2200 watts, and you divide it by your amperage, or I'm sorry, your voltage, 240, so 2200 divided by 240 gives you about, about 10 amps. And the carrying capacity of a 14 gauge wire um, at like a normal operating temperature is 15 amps. So this, has, this can carry 50% more power than I need. So don't go with more heavy cable just because you think you need heavier cable. Um, save your money, spend it somewhere else. It's not, I don't think over designing things is actually a good thing. I think uh, designing things to where they need to be and not 
not a, obviously not below because then it fails, but not above either because then you're just wasting resources. So there's a little philosophy on wire. This, this has three wires. We're gonna talk about how I actually wire this thing up. Um, you just need one with three wires, uh, two hots and a ground in this case. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get all to that later. I just wanted to talk about the wire itself. Pretty sure I just had a bearing roll out of one of my um, one of my guys here, which is not good. But uh, I don't know what to do about it, so I'm gonna pretend it didn't happen. See, I think I lost a bearing out of this guy. Which is still not very good, but I don't know how to fix it and I gotta get this machine up and running. So, it's gonna have to do. Got this guy here. All right, so. Put it there for a second. All right, sitting down. I'm gonna to try to get my water ports, I think. Uh, I think this side is the one I, side I want, I guess if I don't like it. So there's a water ports here, and if they don't, if I don't like where they are, I may have to move them, but we're gonna put it here for now. Let's see if we can frame it in. So we're gonna have to get my guy in here and I'm gonna come back and turn this on and I'll show you what's going on. Okay, so earlier you saw me mounting this guy up here and starting on it and then I realized I had forgot to drill two holes, well, some holes for my water blast. And I decided not to film it because I don't want this video to be take forever to um, edit. And uh, you know, this is about me putting a spindle on. But I just wanna show you, I've added two little holes here and here and that's gonna be for, where's that guy? Here it is. Um, this guy which holds on my my water blast and that's just gonna go 
or my air blast and it also squirts on a little bit of water it actually goes that way um so it goes like that so i got that on there so now the next step is to i guess get the spindle on and um get it trammed and uh, i'm a little worried that i'm gonna have to widen the holes on the mount because i might not be able to get enough going in there so um it's pretty late it's already like 7 30. um i'm not sure how much i have left in me today but we'll see oh guys i just realized i made a i made i, I made a i made a problem <laughs> Fine. um i feel like uh adam savage does this all the time and he says he makes the uh, reddit page watch them die inside and maybe that's happening to me in just a little bit um my eye is twitching because i'm so tired this is the problem this guy right here the neck of this let me show you this the the neck of this thing right here is a lot longer than this router and uh what's happening is like okay this is the this is the tool all the way down right and you can see i would never have any reason to go down this far um because look i mean i would punch it right through the bed of the machine so it doesn't make any any sense to go down that far um so i really need to raise this up because because i can't because that means when i this, it means I'm losing Z travel, right? I'm losing my top height. Um, and it's already pretty small on this size machine anyway. So I need to move this up. But I have this guy sitting as high as I can in the uh, the holder for it right now. Um, it's not going to get, the spindle's not going to get any higher where this is mounted currently. So what I think I'm going to do, I wish I would have caught this, but sometimes shit happens, is I think I can put another hole up here um, above this one in the same hole pattern and I tried to put these in the middle, so hopefully I got it right. And uh, I'll probably have to widen these holes out, of course, because um, it's not going to be that perfect. But if I move them up one, drill another hole, tap it, and then drill out the holes on this guy. Um, so drill, drill another hole on the back plate, right? You probably wouldn't be able to see what I was talking about. But if I put another hole here, and then I uh, make the holes in this guy right here bigger, I can move this up one, and hopefully I won't have that issue. And then... I might not, I wanted to have this sitting as close to the bottom of the spindle as possible in order to keep chatter down. Um, it may have to stick out a little bit in order to completely reach the bottom of the, the thing, but yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to sleep on it. Um, I can't, I can't do any more today, but I'll be back in the morning. Hopefully I'll have this figured out and uh, we'll get back and running again. Yeah. I'm back and I feel much better. Got some rest and... I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't record it because I didn't want to because you've already seen how I drilled the holes. I just added two more holes up in here. I, uh, I bolted the thing on, you know, and then just, you know, moved it up and added another hole. So I have a thread hole up here. You can tell here that it's, it's much higher. And then I have, I have this guy in here and then I've moved it up the offset of this piece of wood. I know I'm, I probably should have the camera flipped around, but I have it moved up the offset of this piece of wood. I have the shortest tool that I would use and I have it set on there. So essentially I have it to where essentially... With the shortest tool I have, it kind of bottoms out right on top of the fixture plate. And that should give me the, the highest amount of Z travel. And uh, and if you look here, it's like, can you see it? It's like perfect. This thing just comes barely to the lip of this. Because what you want is you want this thing holding at the bottom as much as possible to reduce the uh, the flex, the flexing of it, right? Because this, this thing, even though it's made out of solid metal, everything flexes. So the more, the longer it is out that you hold on to something, the more it's going to flex. So if you can grab something as close to the grab something as close as you can to the base that's what you want so um i'm gonna get this tightened down here and then we'll raise the entire thing up and then we'll get it trammed and i have a suspicion i'm probably gonna have to widen the holes on this thing so i might have to take this guy off apart but i should not knock on knock on wood i shouldn't have to um remove this uh this back plate again it should be on there permanently yeah that's about four oh wait it's about four and three quarters inch of travel here. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I could get in with my long reach tool. All right, so now, so now we're gonna grab this here. I'm gonna have to come up with a better way to do this because this is, this is a negative about doing, about this guy is it requires two wrenches when my old one didn't require two wrenches. It was a lot easier to do the tool changes. This is a lot more annoying. The half inch guy. Okay, got a half inch collet in there. 
stick this guy up in there. Okay. Okay, so I'm only seeing three thou on this side. Let's see where we are here. Five thou here, and then this is going to be very hard to read. Negative four. So actually, very little this way, except it's not. So let's do let's do this. So we're looking at negative three there, one there. So let me explain to you what this tool is that I have. This is really simple. This is just a piece of uh, cold rolled. Um, sorry, I want to make sure you guys were in frame. This is a um, piece of cold rolled, and uh, this is just a 3D printed piece that I made on this, and then my plunge indicator just goes right in this. And as long as you're gentle with this, and don't, you know, it's just glued on. It's just super glued on. As long as you don't bump it to where it moves, it gives you pretty accurate and consistent readings. Then you just spin it around, and essentially until you read zero in all places, right? So, um... So let me see here. I gotta, I gotta focus here. This is going to take a while. I'm going to keep messing with this until you want to figure out. Okay, so my fixture plate's not perfect. It's not completely flat, so I'm getting some weird numbers, but uh, I'm going to show you what, what I've been doing here. So we have zero here, right? And I'm going to measure forward and backwards, so on the Y, and I'm going to measure on the X, too. So and I'm going to show you. I got it close, I think, as I'm going to get it. So let me, let me show you what I got. So I got zero here. Um, and you remember, this is in the thousands of an inch, and uh, human hair is like 7 to 12 thou thick. And uh, it depends on your ethnicity. Um, and then this is like, this arm here is like, I don't know, I think three inches out. So we're not measuring a whole lot of error here. I just want you to know that as we go through this. So we have zero here. And then if I come to the front, I'm getting negative seven, which is a little higher than I thought it was a second ago, but um, negative seven, and we should be getting another negative seven here. Let's see, negative eight, close enough. And then I'm gonna spin this guy around as far back as I can here. I'll stick this behind. Is that negative nine? Negative nine. Um, so we're within. So we're zero here, right? Yeah, zero. Zero. So I would. So it's like negative nine, nine thou, nine thou over three inches. Uh, it's not perfect. Um, nicer machines are definitely better. But uh, for a hack together machine and for what I'm doing, definitely not bad. So. Um, so now is kind of more the fun part. I get to do like actual, I'm gonna, I need, I'm gonna make sure these two are tight and just, I'll probably do one more check. And then we're gonna start doing the electrical and, and wiring in the water. Cause we have to do water cooling for this too, which is gonna be pretty cool. All right.
All right, so what you just saw me do is um, solder on the connections. Now, I just put these randomly on one, two, and three. Four is a ground, and I don't have a ground, and I've seen some people online running without a ground. Um, so, you know, I was saying earlier that uh, this, this is a 14 gauge stuff, and it's actually, I could probably have gotten away with 16 gauge, because I think this was made for 16 gauge, and I actually can't get this over the insulation, so I had to pull back my insulation a lot. Um, I tried to solder on or put a cover, use some uh, heat shrink on this. Um, and every, I swear, every time I use heat shrink, the heat travels up the wire and then the heat and then sticks and then the heat shrink shrinks down on my wire and then I can't push it forward. So if you know a trick to keep that from happening, please comment down below and let me know what's going on with that. But uh, um, now all I'm going to do is pull this guy forward like this. And then um, let's see here. This guy just screws down like this. There you can see my heat shrink, not, it's just stuck there. So, okay, that feels tight. And then where's this guy? Does this guy still fit on there? Uh, oh, this, oh no. Does this guy go the other way? Oh no. No. I've made so many mistakes on this goddamn project. <laughs> this has got to come up from the other direction. It can't pop on from the outside. That is so annoying. So do I have to cut this off now? Because I can't get it over the insulation. I guess I gotta cut this off. Well, take two. <laughs> Guys, I just, I'm, I'm just gonna tell you really quick where my mental state is. I cut this off and then realized I could have desoldered it. And then proceeded to solder, solder it back on. Got halfway done when I realized I didn't have either of them on that time. I think my mind is just right at the cusp. I get migraines too and I feel like I have one coming up. <laughs> I'm laughing at how ridiculous I'm being right now. <laughs> it's just, it's, I'm, I'm almost done. I'm not going to worry. I was like, did I put it on backwards? I didn't put it on backwards. Thank God. Okay, this comes forward. This allows me to attach it to the spindle. This is going to come forward after that. Hopefully nothing's touching. Is that insulated? It's not insulated. Of course, this is probably insulated. Okay. Um, all right, so we slide this forward. Nice thing about watching me and not someone else who does this. There's a lot of other videos of this out that are purely informational, but you want to get as much enjoyment out of them, and you want to know how often I fail when making shit. And that would make this, you know, seeing how often I fail makes you feel better about when you fail. We all fail. All right, come on. If you don't fail, you're not trying. Why won't this go on? Okay, let's get some. Very stiff. Something's going on. Oh, solder must have run. Solder must have run up inside my wire because they're really stiff here. They got kind of hot. Maybe I'm not the best at soldering. Who knew? I thought it was thought it was easy. I'm like, hey, I can weld. Should be able to solder. Maybe there's some tricks. I don't know. I got better at it the more I did it, though. Screwing this on here. It's spinning on me. There we go. There we go. Okay, so that goes there, and then we're gonna clamp down. Um, and I didn't, uh, oh man, the bare copper is showing right here. What the fuck, man? There's a cut in my copper. Do you see this? Look at that. How did that happen? Do you see that? I don't know if you can see it. Man, I think I'm gonna break this down one more time. Try to get rid of that. This is just, this has been a painful one, guys. Just painful. All right. Man, I hope that was as painful to watch as it was to experience. I want you guys to suffer with me. Where's the little screwdriver? All right. Little screwdriver. I'm gonna just tighten down these bolts right here. And then uh, this just keeps this thing from yanking free. It's a long thread. I'm just glad I made you wait through that entire thing. Yeah, I'm not even done yet. How about that? That one. 
this one, that one, this one, that one, this one. All right, got it on there. I think you and I can both agree that I need to go watch Avengers and completely not do this for a while because my brain is fried. I'm gonna put this on there. Ooh, though I kind of want to run it through the, the, the line. Let's run it through the line. Let's run it through the line. All right, I made sure, by the way, that I wrote down which pin, which color of the wire is connected to. And if you're doing this too, I suggest you do the same. Because you're technically supposed to, it, it's a three phase wire, so it should be able to go any direction, but in the manual, it says to do that. So, this is fucking filthy. All right, let me. Woo! Alright, we're gonna start here by, I said, uh, what I say, hose, wire, I meant chain, this is called drag chain, so I'm putting this through the drag chain, then there's another one that goes that way, and uh, I start by giving it a nice anchor point up here with a zip tie. Probably, is this all the way down? This is all the way down, so probably like right about, right about there. Cut that if I have to, of course. I just realized I can't get it installed without thicker drag line because I also need to fit the uh, water cooling in there. And I broke one of the wires on my Z-Stop while I was trying to install it. I wasn't defeated. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't give up. I um, ordered some new drag line. Here it is. It's all big and sexy and awesome. 1850. Um, it's like got probably... 30% more room in it than that other drag line over there. Um, and here's the thing, guys. I have a huge mess. I have made a, I spilt about a year's supply of um, Vicom on the floor, which is layup food. Um, my entire shop smells like a disg disgusting lacquer right now. I don't really like the smell of Vicom. Um, here's the thing. I have been, tr I've been tr trying to figure out how to end this video. And uh, there's a lot of work left to do. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of finish it and then presented to you. I mean, we've done a lot of the starting stuff on building this. And it's just a lot of small stuff. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to film it all. I don't know if I'm going to film me putting on this, this new track and stuff. And there's a lot of small things. And I was going to think, like, I'm just going to show you the end. But then I realized it wouldn't be a good video if I didn't show you how this thing is wired. And I want to show that to you really quick. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sh just flip the camera around and I'm going to show this to you. And then I'm probably just going to cut to a scene of the end. That's what I'm thinking. This video is probably getting too long anyway. I have a feeling it's already really long. So let me show you this, and then we'll see where things go. This, this is the thing, right? This is the, the variable frequency drive that drives the three-phase motor. This is controls your speed right here. Ah. Screws, dropping screws everywhere. There we go. So this is the cover that comes off. There's, some, uh, there's a rubber grommet here somewhere, and it's missing. I'll have to find it. But the, the, the cables for both the power and the motor come in here. And then this is a um, 
three phases that can come in. Now, if you have single phase, you just bring your two hots in here. So if you, you, if you don't know that you have three phase, you probably have single phase, which means you'll have uh, essentially two hot wires for your 240, if you have a 240 um, volts um, motor, like I do. So one of them, it doesn't, there's these three terminals, it, you can send it into any three. So I'm just gonna use the first two, and then the ground is gonna come over here and ground into this guy. And then the motor um, is these three right here. And I was talking about on the, uh, the video earlier, I think I was talking about it, let me show you. So this is the, um, this is the wiring. So UVW, UVW, which is uh, UVW, they correspond to pin one, two, three, like that. Um, and then these are my, the colors of the wire that I used, but uh, just so I know when I wired in. Now this shouldn't ne strictly be necessary um, because it's a three phase system. It really shouldn't matter what order they're in, but this is what the thing showed me to do. So when I skip to this, cause I'm gonna, let me show you what I'm doing. This, really the only good place for this guy over here is amongst the spilt stycum, um, but it's behind this main box. This, this box I want to completely redo. The one I got from uh, the company I bought this machine from, the CNC machine from is kind of shite. So I want to change this, it's a huge mess. Um, but this, the, 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 VF, the VFD, <laughs> variable frequency drive, is gonna go right back here. And so I'm not really gonna be able to show it to you um, because it's way back here behind my lathe. So I wanted to show it to you guys now. said I was going to finish the thing up and then then film the rest and show you this but um, I was uh, filling up the water for the uh, coolant pump which uh, you guys saw and um, I realized that that is a 240 volt um, pump and it just has a normal like prong on it um, which is weird because it's American prong, right? It's not a European prong because you're in Europe they use 240 but everywhere in America and I think everywhere that that outlet is used, that thing's only 110. So like, why did they put that on there? It's pretty weird. Um, but I went and I picked up a 240 switch. And so my plan is to wire in, I'm not, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna wire them both into the, uh, the, I haven't, I haven't completely figured out how I'm doing it. I might wire them both into the VFD, the variable frequency drive, and then wire out, but then just have the power come on with a switch so that when I flip the switch, both the VFD and the water pump will come on. I'm gonna have it to where if I flip the switch, the VFD and water pump will come on either way. But um, yeah, I, th I think that's, I'm gonna do it some way. But I wanted to show you, I have this guy and I just, I'm drilling a hole in it because I couldn't find one with a hole in it. Um, and then this, this is a, uh, Rated for 10 amps, so it's like right at the amp rating. But this is probably has a safety factor, so even if I was a little over, it'd probably be okay. And then uh, I just got a single game box, and I'm just gonna stick this all together. And then I'm hoping I really want to get this going by the end of the night. This has been like a week and a half project, um, which I didn't really want to do. This my uh, old router caught fire, <laughs> so uh, I was kind of forced to do this. So I kind of had to start it without being fully researched. I'm like, oh shit, gotta replace this thing. Start buying parts. So, you know, forgive me if I'm a little scatterbrained, but we're getting close. Ladies and like 98% gentlemen, assuming most of you are men watching this, it is time to end this video. It seems like it's been three years but I think we finally got this thing running. And uh, I'm not gonna leave you with a cut because I think I'm gonna do a follow-up video on that. But I am gonna turn it on. I'm gonna show you everything. So first, the light. Oh, and I have something cool to show you. Look, I installed a new fan turning on there. This is a, uh, this is a computer fan because my old one broke. This is nice. Oh, I feel that breeze. Lovely little breeze coming off of that. You don't feel anything because you're watching a video, but. The other thing is I did this little thing. I added a, uh, a holder for all of my probes. Made it out of wood. I make things out of wood too. 
Um, these are all one side of the probe. These are all the other side of the probe. Negative, positive, I don't know which side is which, but it doesn't matter. And let's, uh, let's turn everything on, shall we? I'm gonna just turn on the, the machine too so you get the full sound of all the uh, fans going, but there's the main machine. Oh, I should turn that on a second. Let's, I'm gonna turn that one on last. Um, back over here, let me show you this. Back over here, we have, this is the spindle right here. This, in the corner, not a good way to do things, is the pump. Um, I literally couldn't get it through, so it's wrapped around my lathe leg. This is entirely gonna be re reworked at some point. I'm gonna fold up. I'm gonna make a break at some point. I'm gonna make like a, a water thing for this. I'm gonna make a new brain box for this thing. I'm planning on, I'm planning on taking everything out of this. I might not. Um, but uh, let's, let's back to where we were. So that 240 volts um, pump, I decided to put all on one switch. So I have it plugged in right here with my big powerful extension cord with a giant plug. Uh, this is like a 50 amp plug, but it's only pulling 10 amps. So the plug is way, way large, but that's the size of the uh, end of my extension cord. So that's what I have. So this is plugged in here. This is running into the box. Here we have daisy chained together um, the spindle and the water pump. And I have this toggle switch on here. So when I switch this, the entire thing comes on, which I'm going to do right now. Everyone loves a good toggle switch too. You just heard the uh, pump click on back there. It kind of makes a funny noise. And then there, that just turned on right there. So we're going to come in here. And yes, this is annoying, but eventually this is going to be controlled by the computer. Um, so it won't be a problem. But I'm going to come back here. I'm going to hit run. And then, so I just hit run, which is that green button right there. And then I'm going to turn the knob. Uh, yep, and I hear it turning on. I'm going to turn it all the way up, and I'm going to bring you around. And the ramp up on this thing is very slow. There should probably be a way to change that. But you can hear it's ramping up. Kind of sounds epic. Kind of like a fucking rocket about to take off or something. I actually don't know the RPM of this spindle. Um, but it's running. It's beautiful. It's very quiet. Um, I mean, look, I can speak over it. I like quiet tools. That's why I put all this insulation in here. In addition to, you know, needing to, to build an enclosure for this. But I like quiet tools. It makes my shop experience more enjoyable. So this is entirely awesome. It may explode as soon as it touches metal, but you'll have to wait for the next video to know if that happens. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. I will let you know if you are a fan of the channel. If you like what I'm doing, um, for starters, hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. But if you're beyond that and you're a super fan and you want to connect with me, I am doing daily videos on Instagram. Um, what is my handle? I'll put it right here. Um, and follow me. And uh, you can comment and I'll comment back, most likely until I get super, super famous, and then I'll forget about all of you. Probably won't do that. I won't do that. I'm a nice guy. Um, yeah, thanks for watching this, guys. Uh, this has been quite the adventure, uh, but this is a pretty sick setup, so I'm pretty excited about it, and I hope you are, too. I'm going to use this to make Iron Man suits and rockets. Definitely going to use it to make rockets. This, in particular, is going to make injector pieces. Yeah, cool shit. Bye, guys. One other thing I wanted to mention about this build, because I know you guys were probably curious. Um, the amount I put into this, I believe that was adding a new cooling fan, and I think a little bit of hardware for mounting the, the probes was $416. I think, I think the probe was, I think the fan was like 20 bucks or something. So just under $400 if you just did, um, not the fan. There, there's some data for you. <laughs> Bye, guys.